Hey friends, today I want to share with you uh, a few things. Um, my daughter is expecting a baby uh, this week and so I'm going to do quite a few update videos on different things that I can post this week while uh, I'm helping her with the baby or get them uploaded and then be able to edit and post them um, before she has a baby or while I'm there with her. So first thing I'm going to say is There'll probably be a lot of uh, health video updates this week and make sure you watch them all because some of them actually go together. So um, I'm warning you at the beginning of each video that this is something I tried and that may or may not have worked for me, but just because it did or didn't work for me does not mean that it won't work for you or it will work for you. So I just want to warn you up front that don't try any of these things. These are just, I'm putting them out there to know to let people know that I've tried them, how they worked for me. I am not prescribing or suggesting or anything. This is just documentary for this parasite since I'm the only one I know that's diagnosed with it worldwide that has posted anything about it. There's only 20 cases or less worldwide. I've personally only read about four. Uh, five maybe, uh, a couple in Japan, a couple in Korea, and I think one in uh, Singapore or something. So anyway, that is why I am posting this information, so don't take this as a suggestion. Anyway, the first thing I want to share with you today is someone wrote me um, either on my blog or on YouTube suggesting that they have used Freeman's Cucumber Mask um, I just note for a couple weeks because I've been trying to find it. I live in a small town. I couldn't find it. And they suggested that if that when they use that cucumber mask on their skin, that they were able to pull off the mask when it dried and look at it under the microscope and see things. I uh, couldn't find it. And today I was gluing something and a ton of Elmer's glue fell out on the counter. And then I remembered when I was a kid, I would spread Elmer's glue um, on my skin, just put a whole gob of it on there and then let it dry for about 20 minutes. And then you could peel it off like a skin. So that triggered me thinking about what that person said about the cucumber mask. So I put a gob of this on my hand, quite thick, and I spread it on the top of my hand from about here to here and I let it dry for about 20 minutes and then I peeled it off and I have it right here. I'm going to take it out of the bag so you can see it, but I I don't have a microscope uh, powerful enough to examine that. Let's put it right up there. You can see. Um, the dark spots are holes in the, in the um, glue when I pulled it off. So this is the shiny side up. So this was the side that was down near my skin. And let's see how close I can get without it going out of focus. That's a pretty good camera on that computer. Anyway, I put that, put, peeled that off and I looked at it under the jeweler's loop kind of thing that I have. It's This is a not actually jeweler's loop but you can screw this up and down so you can get as close as you need to. And I could see things on it. I could see, <laughs> you can't see anything like sticking up as far as like obviously a worm pulling out or whatever, but I left it on quite a while actually after it was dry because I didn't want it to be soggy underneath sometimes. And if you've ever done this, it peels off a little soggy. So um, I look at it under this thing and I don't know, there's things that could be me pulling out the hair on the back of my hand. Um, there's still hair there sticking up, but it could have pulled some of those off. I know that I could see dead skin. I know what that looks like. So that was just a thought that I had that I could share with you. If you think you may have this, you can maybe try that on the area where you have a rash. Um, the, I've been using iodine and stuff on my hand, so nothing maybe came out on my hand because I've been using some stuff and I'll share that in another video. But, um, so I would put it on an area where you haven't been treating it with anything. So I've been treating it with other things. And so, um, use it on an area where you have a rash. Like I know the back of the neck, I had my first 
lesion back there this last couple weeks and I can feel things creeping back there. Normally I could just feel it crawling in my in my skull, but um, this last week or two, I've been putting iodine on all the other areas where I've had a rash. And so I think the parasites are looking for a new place. And so that's the first time I've actually had one on the back of my neck. So um, I haven't put iodine back there yet. I've been using diatomaceous earth um, in the hairline because I didn't want to turn my hair orange. So I've just been at night just putting diatomaceous earth powder on, on the back of my neck, trying to keep them down there. But um, anyway, so try it on an area where you have a rash <clears throat> before you treat the area and um, like not after you put diatomaceous earth on or something. And then you can peel that off and look at it under a microscope and see what you can find. I just thought that was kind of a fun way because it is like a second skin and it's see-through. It's very see-through through the loop when I hold it up by the window or whatever. So um, that might be a way that you can actually see if something's coming out of your skin. Also, if you are new to my channel, check out the the reason that I thought the Elmer's glue might work well is because it, there's the slime that you make with um, Elmer's glue and laundry soap, liquid laundry soap. And the ones that I touched had burrow holes in it and the one I didn't touch had no burrow holes. In fact, I cleaned out my cupboard that they were in today. I should have brought them out and I didn't. I don't want to go get them while I'm on camera. Um, but... Uh, the one that they're drying up and that kind of darker watery thing is more prevalent and then the solids are kind of shrinking but you can still clearly see that the burrow holes are still in the one that I touched and there's no burrow holes in the other one. So that is a phenomenon with this parasite. I think that's fair to say that that is that. So check out my other video. Um, on my channel, The Secret is Gratitude, and you can check out my blog, thesecretisgratitude.com, looking for, uh, you type in parasite or horsehair nematomorpha in the bottom search box, and up will come, I, gosh, I probably have 30 posts uh, on it, and diagnosis and treatments and symptoms, so um, thanks for watching, and have a blessed day, and make sure you check out my other videos I'm posting this week, I'll share what I will there, thanks for watching, and have a blessed day.